Hi there, and welcome to another episode of our Inkscape tutorials here. Uh, today we are going to be looking at a third-party web app uh, that will help you make box shapes very quickly and easily. So we're going to pop over to Firefox real quick, and we're going to take a look at what we've got going on here. Now this is the web page. It is uh, boxmaker.rawbotics.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, and what this this does is it allows you to input uh, a few bits of simple information and outputs uh, some uh, PDF that has the the vector in it that will help you uh, quickly make boxes so you're not sitting there um, lining up uh, finger joints and teeth and things so uh, in this uh, we're gonna set the the uh, units in inches and let's make um, why don't we why don't we make ourselves a, a giant dice cube here um, we're going to let's let's make one that's a five inches a five inch cube and uh, our material thickness is an eighth of an inch which is 0.125 and the notch length let's just make those notches um, let's make them half an inch that'll look good and we're not going to worry about cut width um, that's that's really not going to come into play here if you were um, if you had something that cut a really wide swath, you might have to worry about that. And we're going to have it draw a bounding box for us. All right, uh, so we click the Design It button, and it will ask us uh, if we want to save this. Um, we're going to open it with Inkscape. So you can just click the Open Other Inkscape. Here we go. And it should just pop open Inkscape real quick. At least I'm assuming it will. Do, do, do. Okay, so here's Inkscape. It hasn't imported yet. Where are you? Where are you? Are you importing yet? Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got our, our PDF importer tool from Inkscape right here. Um, we're going to leave everything just default and click OK. And should pop us up here okay so I know this looks like a, a blank page here but it just doesn't have any thickness assigned to the lines if you highlight it uh, you'll actually see it here so we're gonna go down the the bottom left hand corner here click it will open up our uh, stroke and fill stuff okay so we're gonna set this to uh, just so you guys can see it a little better we're gonna set this to two pixels and we're going to give the stroke a red color uh, we can get rid of this this uh, bounding box here uh, we actually don't need that after all uh, and what I'm gonna do is because you'll see with this tool every single line segment is actually a separate segment I'm gonna highlight everything with the normal uh, selector tool and then we're gonna switch over to the node editor we're gonna select all of the nodes for all of the the uh, the boxes that are currently or the all the, the segments that are currently on the page and then we're gonna hit <clears throat> the button up here in the top left join selected nodes so as soon as we click that, it might take it a second, uh, but it'll actually join all of those node points that are really close to each other um, and should make them all um, solid objects now. There we go. Took it a second. All right. So now each one of these blocks is, is a side to our, our giant die here. Um, and you'll see that uh, they all will lock together uh, to create to create that shape um, these types of joints here where you have um, these fingers that lock together and can create 90 degree turns uh, are called finger joints um, those of you who have some experience with woodworking uh, will recognize that it is a very widely used join in uh, in woodworking for a lot of boxes and things it's very similar to a dovetail uh, but it's got square edges instead of the angled ones so, um, we, now that we have all of our, our sides here, uh, we can just go ahead and assign um, some, some pips to them. Um, <clears throat> let's create ourselves a box. Okay, that is, this is in fact a box, just had the corners rounded too much. And we are going to make this box here four by four. And we're going to draw our pips in in reference to this. So we're going to keep them away from the edges a bit. Uh, let's make our pips. Um, 
about like a 0.75 inches. That sounds fair. All right, so now we can come over here. We'll center these up by using our um, align and distribute tools. So, whoop, nope. Uh, do, do, do. You need to set this to selection. Okay, there we go. Actually, we don't even need that. We should be fine. I think we're okay. <clears throat> All right. So now that is perfectly in the center of that. We're going to duplicate. I just hit Control D there. Um, and we will make the um, the two side here. And hold on. Let's find a good way of doing this. Um, we've got our steps right now set to probably an eighth of an inch. All right, there we go. Yeah, so 11.25 pixels is an eighth of an inch. Let's uh, let's do a whole inch at a time here. So we'll set this to 90 pixels because we're working at a 90 DPI. Um, and so we'll duplicate and over, 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 up. There we go. Oop. There we go. Okay, so we've got our our two. And if we group those together and then do our, there we go. So now we've got a two, we'll do a three. And I know that these are not on the right sides yet, but we can actually uh, do that a little bit later. So there we go, we got that. And we will center those up again. And we'll come over here and we will do a five and center that one up and now come over here and we'll do a four just get rid of that boom boom and we'll do the six now six is a little bit trickier just because uh, the pip distribution is a little bit a uh, little different uh, let's see how this looks if we just do it that way. Ah, it doesn't look too bad. That'll be fine. Okay, so now we have um, all of our sides designed and all of the pips centered up. Um, we can change these up to, to be where the, the sides of the die actually are. You can use this for a turn counter or, or what have you um, to, to mark something large on the board. But one big thing, unless you wanted to cut all the way through, we need to change the color of these lines to something other than red. Um, I usually use uh, green to mark things that are just going to be engraved on the surface. So um, it's, it'll just make a, an engraved outline on the surface here. We're going to switch this over to green and we will change the line width to not 20 pixels, but two pixels. Just so it shows up on screen a little bit better. So now We've got all of our sides here, and uh, if we cut this out, um, we could put it together and make a, a giant die. Uh, I'm going to group each one of these faces together, and we're going to do a quick um, change in layout here. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, so we can highlight all of these, and we'll come up here to objects, rows and columns, and we'll do uh, three rows of two columns and we'll have them five pixels apart. So we can compact this down a little bit so that it's uh, easier to fit onto the sheet and not waste a whole ton. So we'll just group those together and that is ready for for cutting. Um, so that's that's a, a good practical way to, to make uh, cube objects there with, with the box uh, maker. Um, and uh, you can always tinker around and do all kinds of other things with this. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, um, we could uh, we could have sort of laid everything out and then drawn uh, red lines across all of the pieces that would make it an openable box. Um, you could even design a lip to go inside it so that it nests on top of it and you don't have to have hinges necessarily to, to keep it clasped together. Uh, you can make all kinds of really awesome custom board game boxes with engraved logos. So the possibilities are, are absolutely endless when it comes to using this box maker to make really 
cool um, square object or cubic. Um, I guess it's not cubic, but uh, um, rectangular prismic objects and uh, boxes and storage and all kinds of other fun things. Uh, so uh, I hope that was helpful. You can find a link to the BoxMaker website uh, in the in the description below. Um, I am also uh, going to put links to the the page where you can get the installer for Inkscape. It's just uh, Inkscape.org, I believe. Um, but all that stuff will be in the comments below. Uh, thank you all for tuning in for this um, episode of. Inkscape tutorials. Uh, hopefully you got something fun and useful out of this, uh, if not for laser cutting, just for general use of the program. So uh, thank you all again. Uh, email us with comments, questions, or leave comments here. Uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and tune in next time for more info and fun tutorials and things to do with Inkscape. Thank you.